Hey everybody, my name is Alex. This is part three, the final part for multi-GPU smashing on Ubuntu Linux using an NVIDIA video card. We have installed Post CLI, we've installed all the dependencies, we have set up our Post Data Drive, it is good to go. And we now just need to go over a little bit of the logic behind how we're going to be splitting up our load between the different GPUs. The reason why we're using Post CLI to do this is because you can't do it through the app. It takes a little bit of manual calculations and efforts. Trust me, it's not too bad. I'll walk through this. It's going to be a little long-winded, and I know you're going to want to get to, to smashing, but it's worth watching through unless you're pretty familiar with how this all works and you're just looking for the commands. So without uh, waiting too much longer here, let's get into this diagram that I have. And the first thing we're going to need to do, need to do is figure out how to split the data up. And to do that, let's understand exactly what's happening when we're running a post CLI command. So in a case where you're using four units, I'm using 13, but it, four units is the minimum. Each unit is 64 Gibby bytes. So if we were doing four units, the minimum, that would be 256 Gibby byte for the post data. And when we're generating, when the GPUs generate these post data files, they're using the max file size, which we're going to set as two Gibby bytes. So that means that if we have 256 Gibby bytes worth of post data, if we divide that by two, that's going to be the number of files that we have because each file is two Gibby bytes. And that'll mean that our total number of files is 128, as we can see here. And there's a few just like easy ways to figure this out. You can either multiply your number of units by 32, or you can divide your post data size by two because we're doing two Gibby bit files. So in my case, I have, let me bring up the calculator because I think this will be uh, useful to just kind of see it done real time here. I have 13 is my num units. So if we look at the first method of doing that, we're just going to do 13 times 32. I'm going to have 416 files. That's it. It's easy as as uh, you know we have to do it. Now, if we did it the different way, we would do 13, and since each one is going to be 64 Gibby bytes, that means I'm going to have a total of 832 Gibby bytes worth of post data, and if we look at this second way of doing it, we take our post data and we divide by 2, 416. So you can see whether we did 13 times 32 or we did 832 divided by 2, we get 416 files. Now, if we're using a single GPU, that means that GPU is going to do file 0 all the way to 415. Because we're counting 0 as a file, it's not actually going to be file 416 we end on. It's going to be file 415. You're going to notice that almost all of the settings that we're going to do, we count zero as a file. So just know that when I say file 415, that's going to be the last file because we're counting zero as a file. And if we start from zero, we're only going to go to 415. So I'm not going to re-explain it every single time we have a situation like that. If you're curious about um, you know specifics for your situation you can leave a comment or you can send a message to me you can also join the discord my username in there is repost and I'm always in there happy to help out and make sure that you're doing this correctly so just to make this video not too long-winded I'm not going to re-explain it every single time just know that even though it might seem like they're off by one they're not really because we're accounting for zero all right let's drop this because we don't need it anymore and let's get to some examples. So the idea with two GPUs is we want to split the load. So if we have 416 files, I don't want one GPU to create 416 files. I want each GPU to create half of that. So let's look at an example. And we're going to go back to just using four units because it's easier. We're not going to use the 13 units that I am. Uh, but the, the concept is the same no matter how many number of units you're using. So with two GPUs, if we are doing uh, the minimum, four units, we look at the number of files that we're going to be creating. And if we look up here, remember, we're creating 128 files with four units. 
we want to split this evenly between the GPUs. Now this assumes both your GPUs have about the same power. If one GPU is more powerful than the other, you're going to have to do a little additional math. It gets a little bit more complex because one GPU is going to be creating files faster than the other. So this will be for two GPUs that are similarly powered and we're splitting the load 50-50. Now if you want to split the load like 30-70, Again, you're gonna to have to do the math yourself to figure that out. We're not really gonna go into that. Uh, I might do a separate video, but we're just splitting the work 50-50. So one GPU will be creating 50% of the files. The other GPU will be creating 50% of the files. So we take our total number of files and we divide it by the number of GPUs that we have. In this case, we have two GPUs. So we're going to have the first GPU, GPU zero, do file zero through 63. And then GPU 1 is going to pick off from there and do 64 to 127. That will give us a total of 128 files. And you can already see the benefit. Instead of one GPU trying to create 128 files, now you have two GPUs and they each only have to create 64 files. So that's a huge, huge benefit using multi-GPU. You're basically cutting the time in half. Now, just to make it more clear, let's go over a four GPU example and hopefully this is a little bit, um, not a little bit, hopefully this helps you understand it a little bit more. So again, we're just doing the number of files, 128 divided by four. So instead of 64 files each, since we have four GPUs, we're doing 32 files each. GPU zero will be, do, will be doing zero to 31, GPU one, 32 to 63, GPU two, 64 to 95, and GPU three, 96 to 127. Now we're essentially smashing four times faster than using a single GPU. So overall, like the concept is you're just splitting the files that are being created. And that's really it. That's where the benefit comes from. So there's no magic happening on the back end. We're actually going to be running four separate instances of post CLI with each one creating a set number of files. So let's get back into our terminal here and we'll get started. There's a few things that we're going to need to do before we can start smashing. The one is to understand node ID. So when you're smashing with just a single GPU, when you run the command, it is actually, let's say we run this command here. This is going to start our smashing with provider zero, which is GPU zero, and we're going to do four units, and all of them are going to be created by a single GPU. And one thing we don't have here is ID. There's no flag for specifying the node ID that we're going to be using, and that's because it's automatically created when you start smashing. Now, if we do four GPUs, because we're creating the same post data set, every single GPU needs to use the same node ID. So we need our key.bin in order to get our node ID, and that node ID isn't created until we start smashing. So we're kind of in a, you know, which came first, the chicken or the egg. We have to start smashing to get our node ID. Unless you're using a node and you're creating a ID, uh, a key.bin from a node, this is just assuming we're on a dedicated smasher. We're, we only have post CLI available to us. There is a tool where you can also create a key.bin, but let's just use the tools that we have available to us right now. And there's a little bit of a hack. What you can do is start smashing with a single GPU. Just let the process start. Then we generate the key.bin, we stop our single GPU, get our key.bin, and then we pick up from there using that node ID from our key.bin when we start all of our GPUs. So in order to make this as easy as possible, that's what we're going to do. Now, we're also going to need the highest ATX. And again, if you have a node, this is much easier because you can just query the node. For example, let's go into SM node one. And if I'm in the bottom left box here, if I do this command, I can get the highest ATX. I can convert that ATX into hex, and then I have my highest node. If you aren't uh, able to do that, you can ask me uh, in Discord, or you can send a message to me, and I'll provide you the highest ATX. You might just be able to ask anybody in Discord, but 
keep in mind if they give you the wrong ATX, then you're going to have invalid data. So you want to make sure you're definitely getting the latest and highest ATX. And don't use the one that you see in this video because it might be stale by the time you use it. So let's get back to whiskey here. And we're actually just going to run this command. So again, we're running, if you haven't seen the commands before, it's just going to be sudo dot slash post CLI. That's how we execute our executable. I'm going to be using sudo because this media post data mount point for our, our data is in a root, uh, root owned file uh, folder. Then we're going to do dash provider and that's going to be our GPU. So if we have one GPU, typically it's going to be zero is our first GPU. You can do um, instead of provider, you can just do print provider run that separately. You saw that in video one and that'll show you your IDs. We're going to do our commitment ATX ID labels per unit. It's just always this 429 number. Uh, you can just put that in there. Max file size. This is actually what bytes or something, but it equals to two Gibby bytes for our max file size. I'm just going to start with number of units. Um, you're going to want to actually do the, the number of units that you're actually doing. So I'm doing 13. So even though we're going to eventually split this up between four GPUs, it's going to create what's called a post data underscore metadata file that has the number of units in it. If you were to do four and then later change it to 13, you actually have to change it in that uh, metadata file before you can switch it, you know, to a higher number of units or else you'll get an error. Our dash data dir, that is where our, uh, our post data is going to go. And then let's just run this and we can see that it's now starting. And as soon as we um, just give it like a little bit of time to do its thing, and it's probably by now starting to create the files. If I wanted to be sure, you can just open up a new console and you can do ls-l media post data. And if you see this post data underscore bin file, that means that it's started actually generating uh, the data. So we can see there's some um, information being written there. And it looks like we can now hit control C and it might take a second. Don't hit it more than once. Just let it do its thing. And if we go back to this file here, um, this other window, let's just go over what we see here. We have our key dot bin, which is what we need to get the node ID. We have our post data zero dot bin. This is fine. Just leave that there. You don't even have to delete it. And then we have our post data metadata dot JSON. And if we just do uh, sudo nano media post data and then our post data metadata, we can actually see our node ID here. And our node ID in this case is actually in uh, base 64 format. We, we will need it in um, hex, which we can get from our key.bin. You can see the base 64 of our commitment ATX ID, our labels per unit, our num units, and our max file size. So that's basically all the commands that we wrote in there when we started our smashing. I'm just going to exit out of this. I'm actually going to exit out of this terminal altogether. And now we've stopped our initial smashing and we have our key.bin. So how do we get our node ID from our key.bin? That's going to be the most important thing that we need right now. And it's pretty simple. We're going to do sudo because we're in the sudo owned folder. We're going to do our media post data. That's where our post data is. And we're going to do um, actually we're going to do cat. So we're going to actually output key.bin and we're going to pipe that into um, tail dash C 64 because we want the last 64 characters. And then we're just going to do a semicolon and an echo so we can print it on a separate line basically. And that is our node. So we're just going to take this whole node here and I'm going to save this over in a separate uh, folder here just so that I make sure I have it when we start running our commands and it's as simple as that. Next what we're going to do is actually 
get into tmux so we can run these gpus in um, kind of the same like session so what we can do is tmux new dash s sorry about that getting a call here all right okay so what we can do here is we can start a new tmux uh, window and what we'll do is just call this smasher and we will do control b and then shift parentheses here to split this into two different panes and we'll just rename this pane we can do that by doing control b comma and we're just going to call this gpus and then what we're going to do is create a new window which is control b c and we'll do control b comma again and this will be our monitoring so this is where we'll do our monitoring and we can do control b n to switch between the two control b n control b n and we have two panes here because we are going to be running two post cli commands and our first one is going to be this right here so this is the same command that we ran earlier except we have a few extra flags we have our dash id with that id that we printed out earlier we have labels per unit which is the same max file size is the same num units oops i forgot to switch that to 13 same data dir and then now we're doing to file or from file 0 to file 63 this is actually incorrect because i'm doing 416 files and i just need to split that in half so we're going to do 208 but it'll actually be 207. so pretty simple to do 416 is going to be the total number of files and i want my first gpu to do the first 208 so 0 to 207 and that's it we should be able to get started here and then now we're going to move to the next one and this is going to be basically the same but different now we're going to be using provider one that's our second gpu we're going to be using the same commitment atx the same id remember the node ids have to be the same number of units i'm going to swap that to 13 again and our from file we're picking up where we left off so we were on 207 now we're going to do 208 and i need a total of 416 files so i'm going to do 415 because we know since we're starting with zero that if we do 415 we'll actually have 416 files all right there we go now we're going to go to our monitoring remember that's control b n to move to our next one we do ls dash l uh, oop, that's actually the current directory if we do ls l media post data we can see we have two post data bins we have zero and remember that's where our, our first gpu is starting and we have 208 that's where our second gpu is starting so next we're going to see post data underscore one two three four and that's going to be coming from our first gpu we're going to have 208 209 210 that's coming from our second GPU. And if we do that again here, we can see now both of them are generating data. And we can further confirm by doing NV top. And we can see we have two GPUs here. We have our device zero, and that is at maxing out. And we have GPU uh, device one, which is our other 1070. And it's also you know maxing out the usage here. So we're probably going to see these temps get to about 80. These things run hot. They're also jammed in a small Z420 HP uh, computer. So they're going to warm up pretty good. It should be fine, though. Again, we can do Control B N to move back and see our GPUs. And because we're using Tmux, we could do or Tmux, sorry, uh, Control B D to detach. And we can see we've detached from the Smesher session. And I can even exit out of this whiskey node i can exit out all my nodes and i am good i don't have to worry about the process stopping i can go back into whiskey 
and I can do tmux attach dash t smesher because that's what we called it. But if you forgot what you called it, you can do tmux ls and we can see the name here smesher. So tmux attach dash t smesher and we are back in and let's see how hot these GPUs are. Control B N and uh, we're getting up to 72. Now what you can do here, if you want to actually split this horizontally, you can do control B shift percentage and you can still see those GPUs. It's actually kind of cool how that's set up like that. And then you can actually just watch your files being generated. So if you do LS dash L, in fact, to make this easier, let's just CD. Um, I don't think you need sudo CD. And now we can do LS dash L and we can see our bin files getting created. So if you want to, you can even do um, du dash sh and don't worry about this permission denied. Uh, you can run sudo du dash sh if you want, but what we're looking for is this 225. So we've smashed out 225 megabyte, meg megabytes, or actually I think this is actually megabytes uh, because we're looking at it not through the lens of space mesh or uh, anything like that. So if I run it again, 257. So we can see it's jumping up here. Each file, each of these post data are going to be two gigabytes. So we'll probably have to get to, you know, two gigabytes here before we start to see, or four gigabytes here before we start to see new post data bin files. But at this point, we're smashing. We're good to go. These GPUs are going to continue to go until they are finished. So congratulations, you are doing multi-GPU. And that's going to end this video. If you thought this was helpful, useful, please like, please subscribe. And I will be creating more videos. So if you subscribe, you'll see these new videos come out. And uh, we'll have lots of cool stuff. We're actually going to do, so just a little uh, teaser for an upcoming video. It might already be out. Right now we're using two GPUs for a single host. We're going to look into using two hosts with two G one GPU each. And we're going to be smashing and then joining those files. So uh, this is for anybody that might have two or three different PCs. You don't want to jam three GPUs into your PC. Maybe it doesn't even fit. Uh, you'll be able to smash on separate ones and then bring everything together and have a single post data file. So stay tuned and I'll have that video out hopefully soon.